and I didn't know what would occur. I just knew the date. I'm following the Kabbalism. Well, on that day, I had an, a dozen people at my door standing there wondering how I knew. But now, what was curious to me was that at least four of these people had their bills already folded up into the Twin Towers on 9-11, on the very day. Now, for me, being a conspiracy theorist, as it were... I remember the first place I saw that was Chris Thanis and Corey Cordes and others on their show. First place that broke, I remember, for anybody, within days, they were folding money up. And then years later, it was all over the news. Right. And now it was it was posted on the internet that day. And if somebody just happened to figure this out and all of a sudden show it on the very day, I don't believe. I believe that this is being shown to us, letting us know. Now the curious thing is that those bills were and they're letting you know we're the ones that print the money, we're the ones that did it. Exactly. It's like when special forces would leave an ace card in Vietnamese uh, communists they killed. Yeah. It's it's a cue card. It's a it's a marking their territory. Now, if we're looking at, at it esoterically, if we're looking at it from a magician standpoint, they put these bills out in 1996, uh, and that was when they made the first change. If you look at the bills prior to 96, they don't fold into the Twin Towers. I have uh, pictures there, if we can show them, uh, showing the 20s, where you can see that they don't fold into uh, the Twin Towers prior to 96. And 1996 is the same year that Saddam Hussein is announcing he's Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated, rebuilding the Tower of Babel. Mal that was on the news. Again, Madonna admits she's doing rituals. They all do. He's announcing he's Nebuchadnezzar. Google that. Mainstream. I mean, again, they all believe this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the headline of, of Y2K was Muslims stop the Freemasons from capping the Great Pyramid of Gold. I mean, this is stuff has all been in the news. Everything yeah, I said. There was a big fight in Egypt. George Bush Sr. flies there, and then they say, no, we're not capping it with gold. They had huge movie screens with horned goblins dancing and fire shooting up out of the ground. Yes. So what we're looking at now with this uh, with this bill, and, and from 1996, not only did they build uh, the rebuild Babylon with Nebuchadnezzar, they were also building the Nashville uh, Bicentennial Mall that we talked about last time, which you can see pictures of uh, on FreemanTV.com. Uh, these bills now in, a, in an esoteric and a magical state are already promoting to us the idea, the concept, because they believe that we have like a holographic mind and that we are able to, to incorporate this knowledge without actually seeing it. And so it's already been there for, uh, for since 1996 up to 2001, five years we've got it being imprinted into us through these bills. And then on the day, on 911, they allow us to see it. They, they put it out on their interweb. I, now, what I found really interesting was that uh, as they were promoting this, AOL, which of course their symbol is the eye in the pyramid, uh, was putting out a, a poll because every time you turn on AOL, it gives you a little questionnaire. And their poll was, would you take a national ID card? And so they, they are... They are instilling this mind pattern predictive programming into us they constantly are doing so and they do it in what they consider magical means using exactly what the dollar bill is is a talisman it is simply a magical spell this is the reason that the one dollar bill has never changed because it holds most of their archaic symbols uh, they don't want to change that and so but as we watch now in their mind pattern programming they're starting to make the bills less and less real and they admit that you're getting ready for a change they admit uh, that uh, all these major mints are built as temples and then you can even as you said last week you can even call up the mints and they'll admit it yes yes absolutely and and you'll find them dated to the Anno Lucius calendar which is the Masonic calendar the age of light straight back to Lucifer again uh, but this is this is a magic spell. That is what the dollar is. It's known as a pantacle, a talisman. It's a symbol of, of what? You know, it, of, of a magic spell. It's an enchantment. It has no real value. It's a piece of paper. Right. So we are, they are using these uh, symbols, signs, and seals to, to carry us forth, to bring us forward on their agenda, and we are our lost in the enchantment. They're using Hollywood. They're using... Uh, every method that they have at their disposal to bring us into this fascist dictatorship, this corporate reality that we're all begging for. They have us begging for it. Continue. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's look at this uh, just a little bit deeper, and as we're looking into uh, of how they, they bring us into their agendas, how they do the bind pattern programming, uh, we, we, can, we can travel all the way back to uh, the blowing up of Parliament, the gunpowder plot of 1605, which was brought forth by uh, two men known as Percy and Catesby. 
But of course, they didn't want these two men to come forward. Instead, they would bring about uh, their fall guy. And Guido Fox, or Guy Fox, was original, the original fall guy. But this Percy bloodline that, has been, that was known to be the, the instigators of the gunpowder plot to blow up King James in Parliament, uh, their bloodline had to change their name to Pierce. And we find this Pierce bloodline comes down to Franklin Pierce, our 14th president of America, and we have the same bloodline from who tried to blow up King James. But, of course, Franklin Pierce was then ousted and replaced by James Buchanan, who is a direct descendant of King James, the one the Pierce bloodline tried to blow up. So now is this happenstance? No, this is, this is ritual, this is agenda, this is a moving forward. This is a bloodline agenda. And you have to understand that the, the Masons are always killing and re-killing and re-resurrecting Hiram Abiff. And so, right. so they're into this, doing the same ritual over and over, and they believe he has more power each time. Exactly. Exactly, and we come down to the Pierce bloodline coming down to Bar or Pauline Pierce. Now, Pauline Pierce was friends with Aleister Crowley, and she is known to have gone off to France and had a ritual with with uh, Aleister Crowley. So Pauline Pierce and Aleister Crowley off doing... Now, what you must realize is uh, once you get up in the higher levels of Freemasonry, with like the Ordo Templi Orientis, the, the Order of uh, the OTO, uh, they, this is sex ritual, is sex magic, and that's where you get all of these hermaphroditic sexual symbols like Target Sun Sun. Uh, so Pauline Pierce... Which is a pyramid from on top. Yeah, yeah. Target symbols looking down on a pyramid. A step pyramid. Pauline Pierce then has a sexual ritual with Aleister Crowley. She comes back, and hey, lo and behold, she's pregnant. Uh, now, whether or not the, she was pregnant through Marvin or through Aleister Crowley is not known by the public, but then uh, what we find is uh, <laughs> she gives birth to Barbara. Uh, Barbara Pierce then marries the head of the CIA, George H.W. Bush, and we have... And you've tracked this. This is a fact. This is, well, as much as we can prove Hitler's the Rothschild, I can prove uh, W is the grandson of well, the Well, that's beast. even the mainline history books, that uh, that his father's mother did work in the Rothschild house, and that, and that he did have a bunch of illegitimate children and did, and did place her. And it was mainstream media when Pauline Pierce went to France with Aleister Crowley and had a sexual ritual. And so, but then we, but, and then she is connected to Barbara. Yes. Uh, yeah. Pauline Pierce is, is Barbara Bush's mother. Th that is a fact. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and I look, that's unbelievable. <laughs> and you look at the picture, you know, and Barbara Bush looks very much like Aleister Crowley, and that would make George W. Bush the grandson of the beast. 666, and that's what Aleister Crowley called himself. Uh, I, I look at the picture, I look at the news, I see it. Uh, you know, it's up to you to decide. But to be clear, they admit that Barbara Bush's mother did have a tryst with Aleister Crowley. Absolutely, along with uh, Marvin Pierce, who is the uh, owner of McCall's and Red Book magazines. Uh, well, she went off without him and returned pregnant. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's admitted that Bill Clinton is a Rockefeller, that his mother was a prostitute, and, and then that's come out. Uh, it's admitted that Rockefellers have secret breeding programs. They're obsessed with that. Exactly. And if we believe this and we see this over and over again, then this isn't that far outside of the realms of possibility. And we can actually track this bloodline from the blowing up of King James at Parliament, or the attempt to, uh, all the way up to the presidents and up to George W. Bush today. Um, this is crazy. Uh, okay, have one more. Let me throw you one more. Uh, Anna Nicole Smith, okay? She uh, was a seeming high-profile ritual goddess for the Brotherhood, uh, much like Marilyn Monroe, James Manfield, uh, that they were used in these high-profile rituals. Now, 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 it was Mansfield who really was in... Uh, she was in the Church of Satan. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're talking, that. that's admitted. That's, that's admitted, yeah. Absolutely, and George W. Bush uh, is admittedly a, a descendant of Marilyn Monroe. It was in Us Weekly magazine. I don't know. Uh, so, and then Barack Obama is related to Cheney and Bush. <laughs> exactly. You see, we're looking at a huge globalist, capitalist family. And uh, what we find is now uh, Anna Nicole was being passed around in these different uh, rituals and having sex with m many, many people. Uh, one of which was Prince Frederick von Anhalt. And Prince Frederick von Anhalt was the one who stood before the whole public, it's in my video, and said, no, that child is mine. Do the dates. Do the timing. She was having sex with me on a night that no one seems to remember. Uh, 
Now, if we look into Prince Frederick von Anhalt's lineage, we find that he is, is quite possibly a genetic experiment to artificially inseminate Gretel Braun into, uh, with Hitler's semen. Now, we know that uh, Klauberg was, was the father of artificial insemination, Karl Klauberg, and that they had kept Hitler's semen. So it, uh, it's possible, right? Uh, but now, Prince Frederick von Anhalt's being a, a Hitler, being a Rothschild, would make Anna Nicole's baby a Rothschild. Right, if he truly was the father, as he says he is. Well, it goes back to the Greeks, though. That you would the prostitutes were at the temple. You'd go have sex with them there. That's where you. This is all crazy. I know a lot of it can be documented. Some of it can't. It's just so bizarre, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting into some of the really esoteric things here with our guests. We're going to skip this break for Infowars.com listeners. Jim Newcomer from. Well, let me just, okay, yeah, we're going to cut that off. Uh, go ahead. Let me just conclude that thought because uh, what we find now is uh, the claimants for Al for Anna Nicole's babies, of course, are, are Howard K. Stern and, and uh, Burkhead, Larry Burkhead. Uh, but of course, out of the blue comes Prince Frederick von Anhalt, who is the husband of Zsa, Zsa Gabor, who is another rumored uh, mind control slave for the media, and he he honestly keeps her locked up in his mansion with a padlock. Zsa, Zsa Gabor is not allowed out. Okay, so now we've got this guy connected with a former mind control slave, and now with a, a new mind control slave. Now, what is curious is when Anna Nicole died, uh, well, before she, before her death, I'm sorry, she was given over to uh, uh, Howard Marshall.